Well, and there it is. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotions with Pastor Sutton. It is February 9th, Thursday. I have Bible study up at Grace Lodge in Rhinelander this morning, so we got to get moving along here. It's uh, 25 to already almost, and I've got to leave here by 9, which never happens. Um, when we scheduled that, the, the activity director likes to schedule things at the top of the hour. So she said, so you'll be here at 9. And I said, ah, no. She said, well, we got stuff at 10. Maybe 10 is too late. And I said, well, I can be here at 930. And that's what I do my best to do. But it usually winds up being about 20 to 10. But the ladies there know, and they expect me to be a little late. So good morning. I'm glad you're here with us on this dreary day. It's dreary. Um, to the south of us, snow and rain and sleet and mess. Uh, my friends in Madison are getting covered with guck. Um, I think even the old man. My dad is getting crud in uh, Westby. Huh? Yeah, but not us. We're north of it, which is kind of weird because we're supposed to get one to two inches between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., but it doesn't look like the storm's even going to move north. It looks like it's just going across, which means you guys over in Michigan are going to get it. So, But we are dreary. We are overcast. The cloud cover is up here, that's for sure. And maybe there's enough moisture to move north as it comes, but right now nothing, which is good, which is good. I don't want to drive in it, so... Um, so good morning. Glad you're here with us on this, again, on this uh, Thursday, February 9th, as we delve into this. Let's see who is here with us. Uh, Jerry, good morning. Glad you're here. Kelly, good morning. Headed to work on this dreary raining day. Well, you know, keep your eyes on the road. <clears throat> Don't hydroplane. Haven't heard much from your hubby in a while. I hope everything's okay with you guys. Uh, Leela, good morning to you. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Another beautiful day before it cools off again. Well, we're already cooling off, so. Um, although I don't know what the high is supposed to be today, but we're at, weather service says we're at 22 right now, so just kind of have to play it uh, by the e by the ear, so to say, peak. Uh, Connie and Robin, good morning. No sun this morning in Harshaw. No, not here either, guys. Coffee on the porch yesterday. No kidding. That's awesome. That's awesome. Bundled up, though, because it wasn't that warm. Uh, Jill and John, good morning. You know, uh, speaking of which, you know, there's this thing that goes around about people in Wisconsin, and it gets above 20 degrees or something like that, and they've got to go outside in shorts. That's not me, guys. I, I put my longies on uh, at the beginning of October, and I might take them off at the end of May if I'm lucky. Um, I'm not a... I'm not a, I get cold too easy. Jill and, uh, I say good morning to Jill and John, but good morning again, guys. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Kathy, good morning. I'm going to uh, just update here in case anybody popped in while I was, while I was uh, reading. Oh, yep, sure enough, there's uh, uh, Ann and Deb and Grant. Uh, well, Grant's name's not there, but Grant's probably somewhere around. Hi to you guys. There is Bonnie, and she's saying it's 25, not 22, but that's all right. Mushtaq, good evening. Continuing to pray for uh, your brother, Shazad. Um, and Kendra, good morning. And to all of you lurking in the background who don't uh, chime in here or sign up, good morning. Glad you're here with us. And uh, those watching later or on YouTube, good morning as well, or good day or good afternoon or what have you. I better quit screwing around and get down to business here. Uh, let's do that. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer. For individuals and families, the morning order, uh, I have my treasury of daily prayer right here as we begin this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning, the 23rd Psalm, Psalm 23, verses 1 through 5. We could have done the whole thing. You guys could do this by heart, I'm sure. 
I think I've said it before, but the, the 23rd Psalm always amazes me because, you know, we, we talk about the different translations of the Bible and how some are more on the literal side trying to get the exact original language. And so the word order sometimes is weird. The ESV is part of that, the English Standard Version. And on the other end of the spectrum, you've got the the um, paraphrase, 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 I was going to put a fancier word there, but paraphrase Bibles that just kind of give the idea of the text, but don't necessarily remain faithful to what the grammar was in the original, um, and everything in between, right? And we could talk about that someday if you want, but, um, but the 23rd Psalm is like, don't mess with my Psalm, because you go to just about any translation, and um, other than removing the these and the thys and the thous, um, and and bringing the language to a, to modern English, it's the same as the King James, it, it, almost absolutely identical. Um, yeah. And I mean that. I mean it's without a. It would have been fun if I had more time today to show you a text comparison, but um, but. So, you know, it, and, and whenever I do a funeral, the first thing people say is, well, we're going to use the 23rd Psalm, right? Well, yeah, we are. Just about every time. Not every time. Just about every time. Bonnie says, not at her funeral. Um, all right. 23rd Psalm, verses 1 to 5. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Need I say more? There is great comfort in this psalm. Um, but it, it, the, when, when David wrote this, he was looking directly at God and at the promises of salvation that he, he was given, that he knew uh, that the Messiah would come, the Christ. Um, and he knew that even though the world was falling apart around him, God was there. God was in control. And God was giving him comfort. And God was sustaining him until his, his last day in the world. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. All right. Let's go on to Job, speaking of suffering and misery. So Job is going to make his reply to Eliphaz now. Um, we heard two days of Eliphaz um, speaking to Job. Now we're, Job is going to respond to Eliphaz. So Job chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. Then Job answered and said, Oh, that my vexation were weighed, and all my calamity laid in the balances. For then it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are in me. My spirit drinks their poison. The terrors of God are arrayed against me. Does the wild donkey bray when he has grass, or the ox low over his fodder? Can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the juice of the mallow? <laughs> my appetite refuses to touch them. They are as food that is loathsome to me. Oh, that I might have my request, and that God would fulfill my hope, that it would please God to crush me, that he would let loose his hands and cut me off. This would be my comfort. I would even exalt in pain, unsparing, for I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should wait? What is my end that I should be patient? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh bronze? Have I any help in me when resource is driven from me? 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Job asks, if it were that, that, that his, his strife, his vexation, I think that's a word we don't use often enough anymore. You vex me. If it were to be weighed, and then he, he because this is poetical, he, in, the, in the second part of the verse, he, he says the same sort of thing, magnifying it. All my calamity laid in the balances, in the, in the scales. Then it would be heavier than the sea, the sand of the sea. And I, all of you have been near wet sand before and know how heavy it is. Dry sand is heavy, but wet sand holds so much more weight. If I could take all my troubles and put them in a bowl and put them on the scale, they would weigh more than all the sand of the sea. And because it seems that way to me, my words have been rash, coarse, unthought, unfettered. For the arrows of the Almighty are in me. My spirit drinks their poison. Whatever God is allowing to come upon me is upon me, and I am suffering the full weight of it, the full effect of it. It feels as if the things that God can put upon me are arrayed against me, and I'm fighting. <clears throat> Why do I complain? Well, does the donkey complain when it has its grass or the cow low? That is a, a sound of complaint over its fodder. No, but I have not these things. And so I complain as they do when they are hungry. And yet food is tasteless. It's without salt. There's no seasoning in my life to make it good. I don't know what a mallow is. I mean, I know what a marshmallow is. But what's a mallow? That's a question for another day. Is there any taste in the juice of a mallow? But I'm, I'm guessing that, that it's probably the, the pulp of a fruit of some kind um, that is, is watery. Um, you know, like, like iceberg lettuce. If you, were to, if you were to pulp up iceberg lettuce, what would you have? There'd be no taste. <clears throat> if celery didn't have celery salt in it, the salt of celery in it, it would have no flavor. It has very little favorite flavor as it is, although it, because it's salty, it's very complimentary to peanut butter. Can you put raisins on it, ants on a log? Now you're all hungry, aren't you? My appetite refuses to touch them. The, the good things that might be around me, I cannot even reach out for because I am so weighed down. I don't know what to do. Oh, that I might have my request that, that, that it would please God to just crush me, to kill me, to destroy me, to end my life, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off and end it here and now in the midst of my suffering. And that would be a comfort to die. Even if it were painful, I would exalt in the pain that would pour forth upon me without limit, because then I would feel something. I have not denied the words of God, and yet this is upon me. What strength, what strength do I have that I should wait? How do I endure? What is my end that being patient to wait is so much better than suffering through this. Is my strength the strength of stones? Or is my flesh bronze? Am I made of am I made of substances which cannot be broken, which can stand against the tide, that can hold out against the sword? Have I any help in me when when I have nothing? resource driven from me when I have nothing. Do you hear his lament? Do you hear his pain and his agony and his suffering? Do you hear how despairing he is? And yet he knows. He knows that God has not abandoned him because he's still calling on God. 
is calling on God to end it, to, to take away his suffering, to crush him, to put pain that is un, unsparing upon him that he would just die. How often the saints feel this way. And we, we see it in the scriptures. Moses, Elijah, um, and others. If you're going to put this upon me, Lord, just kill me and get it over with. Elijah lies down under the broom tree and says, I've had enough. The world is against me. Just let me die. The Lord sends him cakes and water twice. He says, now you have the strength. Go and do the last things that I have said. For there are 7,000 in the, in the land of in the land who have not kissed the nose of Baal. But there are still faithful. And we're not alone. We're not alone. When, when everything is coming down around us, we need to stop closing ourselves off from everybody and reach out to our brothers and sisters in Christ in prayer. To call upon them and say, help me, pray for me, pray with me, be with me. We need to call our pastor and say, come visit me. Come remind me of what God has done for me, that in the midst of my suffering, Christ. It was Paul who said, for me to die is gain, but to live is Christ. And to die is gain, to be with the Lord is gain, but to remain in this world faithful, as Job does, is to remind others, to be a witness to others of the faith that we have in God. The world is, is, is and has been going to hell in a handbasket for millennia. Frankly, since, well, the seventh day. Since creation was good, when, since God looked at it, creation was good, and, and then came the fall. And since then, everything's been going to hell. But God gave his only begotten son to suffer for you, for me, to die for you and for me, to shed his blood, to cleanse our sin, and to bring us to him, to call us and enlighten us and strengthen us by his good news, his gospel, to remind us that he will not leave us, nor will he desert us. And that although this life may be suffering and difficult, we have the promise of eternity with him and joy and glory unending. When he says, what is my strength that I should wait? What is my end that I should be patient? It's Christ. He gives us the strength to endure. Endure remaining faithful until our last day when we join him in his heavenly kingdom. Amen. Hey, that was kind of short. Let's go to the prayer of the day. Let us, well, <clears throat> now let us pray. Oh God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let we continue with the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, Lord Jesus Christ, I marvel at your wondrous love for me, which is new again today. All throughout my life, I have been unfaithful to you. I have idolatrously chased my evil thoughts and desires. I have adulterously loved the things of the world more than I have loved you. Be still, you have cho- but, but still, you have chosen me. You have given yourself to death for me. You have cleansed me through the water and the word in my baptism. Thank you for making me a part of your beautiful and radiant bride, the church which you purchased with your own precious blood. As your church, help us to, to, help us to live in the light of your cross. Scatter the darkness of division, strife, hostility, grudges, stubbornness, laziness, apathy, and heresy that so often plague and hinder us. Let us bask in your merciful presence as we gather around your holy word and sacraments each week. Allow us to sorrow together, rejoice together, and forgive one another. Guard and protect me from neglecting and despising your word and your people. Give me a fervent desire to come to church each week. Teach me to treasure your word and sacraments. Let me hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Feed me with your life-giving, sin-forgiving body and blood. Enable me to taste and see that you are good. Strengthen my faith. Help me look to you alone for forgiveness, life, and salvation. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your mercy upon those who are suffering. We continue to pray for those in Turkey and Syria as they recover from natural disaster. We call upon you to give comfort also to those who are injured or suffering from illness, age, or other malady. Especially Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, Ivan, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Strengthen them, O Lord as it is your good and gracious will, give healing and comfort through your Son, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that's our devotion for Thursday morning. We got through it in time. I can close this out and get it uploaded to YouTube. So God's peace be with you. God's strength be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. God's peace.